Good evening. It's Tuesday evening, and Carrie and I are glad to be with you tonight. We have come away to the sanctuary to have quiet time, and we are always thankful for you to drop by and be with us. This evening, I want to share a passage uh, with you from Colossians. It's from the third chapter, and we'll be looking at verses 12 and 13. I think this is an important word for us today to hear and to respond to. So here are these words from Colossians. God has chosen you and made you his holy people. He loves you, so always do these things. Show mercy to others. Be kind, humble, gentle, and patient. Get along with each other and forgive each other. If someone does wrong to you, forgive that person because the Lord forgave you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know... I have to tell you the truth, since it's just us. I am a friend of unforgiveness. And that's not really something that I'm very proud of. I don't know, maybe you're a friend of unforgiveness too. Maybe you've carried something around in your heart for a long time and you just didn't believe you could ever get over it. Or that everything would ever be okay. And that was the basis for you to act however you wanted to act. Or treat that person however you wanted to treat that person. Not forgiving folks gets us in lots of trouble. Not necessarily uh, in the kind of trouble that we always think about. We have all sorts of little sayings that we have, don't we, about forgiving people. One of the best that I always hear, take it or leave it, is the thing about when we don't forgive, we're only hurting ourselves. So we forgive so that we won't be hurt. <laughs> I kind of think that stinks. A lot of people think that's great. But basically what that says to me is that we are forgiving just to protect ourselves. Again. And that's where I see the flaw in that kind of philosophy. I don't see that in Jesus at all. I think when we are talking about not being forgiving or that we're supposed to be forgiving, what we're really talking about, if we're honest, is that we are hurt. Our feelings have been hurt. Our feelings, there they are again. <laughs> Jesus never said, go by what you feel. Jesus said to us, go by what I say. We have all kinds of feelings. In school, I was taught, when I was in seminary, I was taught that we, we have feelings and we can't really do anything about our feelings. What we're responsible for is how we act. You know, you may think, oh, I'd just like to kill that person. Of course, you don't really mean that. But you may think to yourself, I'd like to kill that person. But unless you truly go and do that, then there's a big difference. We have feelings and we say, oh God, I'm sorry I even thought of that. Please forgive me. And sincerely, when we ask, we believe, as Jesus teaches us, that we are forgiven. So it comes to us again. It has to do with what we're thinking, and it has to do then with us not acting. And it has to do with us being honest. You know, holding grudges that same thing that we're talking about in not forgiving, you know, it equals holding grudges, goes back again to us. And it has to do with the fact that we got our feelings hurt. But grown men don't want to admit that. Grown women don't want to admit that. Little kids, teenagers, nobody really wants to admit that we had our feelings so far out that we got hurt. And nobody wants to admit that somebody else had that much power over them that they could hurt them or hurt them for a long time. But when you love other people, and that's when we mostly get hurt, when you love other people, you're going to get hurt. When you lose people to what we think of as death, we know we won't really lose them. But when someone passes from us, we always think about, you know, we, we really are, we're hurting. And we think about all of the things that happened that we, we wish we had said we were far, sorry for then, but we didn't. 
And so we find ourselves truly in a world of hurt. I have understood in my old age, and from a lot of teaching and a lot of work, that really, if you can go, as the scripture tells us, and talk to your brothers or sisters, and really understand, let them share with you from their vantage point where they were at the time, that lots of things may change. Lots of things. It's no longer something that you just have to live with. You actually, through the grace of God, might find yourself forgiving that person. In fact, that person may become one of your favorite people or your favorite person. You just have no idea because you haven't given yourself that opportunity. That's really what forgiveness is about. That's what God wants for us so much. It's not something that he, God tells us over and over through, through Jesus Christ to forgive. And as I said, we have taken it and made these, these little phrases out of it so that we'll forgive. But that's not where the joy comes from. The joy doesn't come in me protecting myself. It comes from this opportunity that I now have. And I want you to hear me on this. You may be missing the best opportunity of your life by not forgiving this person or these people that you think hurt you. You might see it from their point of view and all of a sudden, everything that you felt for them, all of the hurt that you felt, all of those kinds of things that really started with you loving them, comes rushing back. In other words, as Christ tells us and, and as he bridges the gaps for us in life, we have a new beginning. That's what real forgiveness is all about. It's not about little sayings. It's about what Christ did on the cross. It's about forgiveness that we can't buy. It's about forgiveness that we can't understand unless we have the grace of God and the mercy of God acting in our lives all the time. And unless, especially, we realize that we too have had things in our lives that we need to be forgiven for. And when we need to be forgiven and we feel that so deeply, we start bugging other people. We do everything we can to ask for forgiveness. We want their forgiveness right away. But the wise among us, and I don't know how they do it, <laughs> but the wise among us are patient. And they're not always on our door saying, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Real forgiveness, a lot of times, takes time. But it's the best time that you'll ever spend when you ask God to help you to truly listen to another person. Especially if that person has been extremely important to you. So I want you to see this for the joy that forgiveness, forgiving someone, really brings. Because that's God's intention. It's just not self-preservation. It's all about finding new life and new relationships and a new way of living. Christ did that for us. And he's asking us to do that for others that we live with and live around so that we might live in peace and that we might understand a joy like we've never known. Give yourself that chance. God calls us, calls us to it every day. Enjoy your night. Rest in peace. And I'll see you tomorrow night. And it will be Wednesday. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Fix
fix me Fix 